Hey guys, welcome to our first online lecture um, in our classroom. So excited about this. Um, I hope this helps you understand the material a little bit better and gives you um, a resource to be able to go back and learn the material um, more than once. Uh, so you can go back to this video anytime you'd like. This will be posted to our YouTube channel for the rest of the year. Um, so I would recommend you go back if you're not understanding a concept very well or if you're needing some more time to kind of let everything sink in because biology is a tough subject to learn. Lots of vocab, um, lots of concepts. So um, I hope you go th through this more than once, but let's go ahead and get started. So um, get, get your note outline and make sure you're filling out your note outline as you go. But we're going to talk about DNA as a genetic material. So mainly we're going to talk about the history of DNA and how we discovered what DNA did. We did know for a long time that there was DNA. We just didn't know what it did until about until 1952. Um, so you learned about this in your stations, but we'll just go over what we kind of learned in our stations. So the transforming principle, this was um, a coin termed by a British microbiologist, Frederick Griffith, and he investigated two forms of bacteria that caused pneumonia. So he noticed that one of these forms, and you can see his uh, experiment here, one of his forms used a rough strain of this bacteria, and this rough strain could be killed by these, these mice's uh, immune systems or their white blood cells. So as you know, white blood cells kill off diseases for us. Um, and so these mice have these white blood cells as well. And so the mice, the white blood cells could actually get through the coating of the rough strain of this, of this bacteria and kill this bacteria. So there was this rough strain which was pretty harmless because the white blood cells could fight it off, but then there was a smooth strain and the smooth strain had a tough coating and the, their immune system couldn't penetrate the co coating. So their white blood cells couldn't penetrate the coating in order to kill it. So they, these, mi these mice died. Um, so then he had decided to heat up this smooth strain to kill the strain, um, but it wouldn't necessarily kill what was inside of the strain. So this is how he set up his experiment. Um, one form was harmless and the other was harmful. So when he inserted the dead harmful bacteria in with the harmless bacteria, he found that the harmless bacteria began to transform or mutate into this harmful bacteria. So how did it do that? So he, when he injected this smooth strain by itself and it was heated up so it killed the bacteria, the mouse lived. So that would be expected if he had injected it again with this rough strain or harmless strain here. So he injected this rough strain or harmless strain of bacteria along with this smooth strain that he had heated up and actually killed. So apparently not everything had died off in this because then you had these rough strains mutating and the mouse actually died because they had mutated into these smooth strains that were harmful to the mouse. So how did that happen? So there must have been something in side these smooth strains still that was transforming these rough strains. So we didn't, he just didn't know what that was. But he called this the transforming principle. So he concluded that there was a material that contained information that changed the harmless bacteria into the disease causing bacteria. So he called this the transforming principle. So remember when we um, are talking about science and scientific exper experiments, one of the glories of science is we're going to build on top of each other um, when we're making discoveries. So as we discover more things, we can build off of other people's experiments. And so that's what happened here when we're discovering DNA. So then about 10 years later, we have Avery that identified DNA as the transforming principle. So he created tests to find out if the transforming principle was protein or DNA. So we knew that they had this DNA in these, um, in these cells, and we knew that there were protein in these cells as well. 
So he performed chemical tests that revealed that no protein was present, but DNA was. So how did he, how did he know which was which? So basically he measured the amount of different elements in protein versus DNA. So he knew that proteins had more sulfur content in them, whereas DNA had more phosphorus content in them. So he measured these elements and he could tell the difference between the two. So when enzymes were added that broke down proteins, so they knew that these en enzymes would break down proteins, um, the harmless bacteria still transformed into disease-causing bacteria. So they knew that these proteins weren't what was causing this disease or this transformation to happen because they had broken down the proteins. So that it must have been something else. So we're going to skip ahead and we're going to skip to Hershey and Chase's study with bacteriophages. And let's kind of re-explain what bacteriophages is, are. These were in your vocab. So we should know a little bit about bacteriophage, but basically bacteriophage were viruses, which is ironic because we're studying how living things pass on their genetic information through non-living things because viruses are non-living. They need a host in order to pass on their genetic information. Um, so these were a good way to study how DNA worked. Um, so Hershey and Chase studied bacteriophages to conclude that DNA was the genetic material. So they studied which part of a phage, DNA or protein, actually entered a bacterium. Um, they grew phages in cultures that contained radioactive isotopes of sulfur or phosphorus. So if you remember back to the last experiment, um, they concluded that, that proteins had more sulfur and DNA had more phosphorus, so they could tell the difference between the two. So with these radioactive isotopes, they could see what was being injected into these bacteria. So they did an experiment here, and they injected um, this cold DNA into this bacteria. So when they're injecting proteins in, so they know, because it's not going to light up, that it's not the proteins, because they had radioactively stimulated these proteins. Um, and so nothing lit up in the bacteria. But when they then... Um, tested these radioactive isotopes of phosphorus, then these viruses inserted their DNA into these bacteria and they glue. So they could see that it was actually the DNA that they were that they were placing into this bacteria in order to reproduce. So that is how we discovered um, that DNA held genetic material. So I hope this video helped and um, we will talk about this more in class, um, but make sure you fill out your notes. Feel free to rewind as much as you'd like um, to help you understand the different concepts and I will see you all in class.